echt mededogen en morele normen zijn de ware oplossing. Deel 14 van 22 Intussen meester en discipelen, gehouden in het Engels op 21 december 2021. I had a neighbor. She was 60 something. And uh, she never wore the top. In summer, she didn't wear it. She just wore the trousers under. Nobody said anything. She was inside her yard, of course. Mm. But this yard or garden was small and narrow and was next to the highway. Uh-huh. Next to the only one national way where the south can go to the central. At that time, we didn't have the north yet. Uh-huh. It was still in the war. Even after the war, we were divided. The Vietnam country was divided into north and south. Mm-hmm. So that's the national way you can go from south to the north. Mm-hmm. And her house was next to it. And she had a husband, of course, and children, three. And they were very kind to me, very kind, very mm-hmm. sweet people. I liked them very much. Mm-hmm. They were very kind. Whenever I went over, I, for some reason, I went to school together with them. And in the morning, they would give their children some rice soup. Mm-hmm. Only uh, congee with salt in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But they would give me one bowl or so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. share with me. And then if they had one banana for the three of them, they would give me one fourth of it also. Mm-hmm. The family was poor. Not too poor. At least they have the land and the house. Mm-hmm. And the mother was doing some um, making tofu, mm-hmm. making yeah. silken tofu. In Vietnam, we make silken tofu. Uh, warm it and eat it with ginger uh, syrup. Mm-hmm. A syrup will cook with ginger. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And she made that and her middle elder daughter carried it to the market to sell it. Mm-hmm. And they have three children and they still could cover them and they went to school. In Vietnam at that time, the primary school was free. Mm-hmm. It was obligatory and free. So the elder son went also to the same school with me. So sometimes I went there and we would go together with him, something like that. I forgot most of the time. Whenever I came, if it was meal time, they give me something. Uh-huh. It's not only this family. Another family also treated me so kindly like that in Vietnam. In high school time, it was a similar story. Because mm-hmm. uh, I had a friend, a uh, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> when I was older, I studied in a, a female high school. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Only female. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Only uh, girls, girls' school. Yes. And of course, I passed by some houses, so we could go together. Yes. Girls. Yes. I have many girlfriends. So if it was breakfast time and I happened to be there at that time, they ate breakfast before I went to school. Yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't. <laughs> uh, nobody cooked breakfast for me, so I stayed with my uncle at that time. Yes. So nobody cooked breakfast for me, nothing. I went just like that. I don't remember how I went home for lunch or something. Forgot. Mm. In primary school, I walked home for lunch. It's about one kilometer from my house. Oh. But my high school was nearby my uncle's house. My uncle was stationed in a small medical clinic. Yeah. And he was the chief there. So because in the war, many shoulders were wounded. They brought him there for quick first treatment. And then they called helicopters to take them to speak a if necessary, to a big uh, hospital, mm-hmm. if necessary. Otherwise, we had also other smaller hospitals nearby where I went sometimes to help with the patients. Mm. I couldn't do much, just like taking away the excrement or... Bed pan. A bed pan and yeah. stuff like mm. that, to throw away, wash them and bring them back, stuff mm. like that. Or clean the floor or talk to them, listen to their pain. And with my uncle, I helped with washing the soldiers when they were wounded. You have to wash with oxygen water. Yeah, and then wash so that the the medical people or my uncle can see where the wound is exactly. So they can dress them. And then we carry them with the patient carrying bed. Not bed. A stretcher? A stretcher to carry them. We were small, me and some other kids who lived there nearby also, or, or live in, in the same clinic. We carry them to the helicopter. Oh. 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 Wow. I could, I could. There were adults with their big shoulders, but I don't know how I could have done that. Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, I carry with another boy of similar age, mm. <laughs> same size, because we didn't have enough people. There were sometimes a lot of shoulders wounded. Yeah. So we children help out at midnight or whenever they came in. Oh. It was a sad time for kids. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, why did I tell you all this? I don't remember why. <laughs> what was it? Talking about the Alexi story. Uh, the Alexi story, I know, but what brought me to the... Oh, the kindness of the neighbors, of my neighbors and mm. of my... Uh, Classmates, parents. Ah, yes. Yeah. They were not all rich, but they were very kind to me. Mm. That's all I remember the kindness mm. of the people, the rural people, the non rich people. Yes. Or just okay, not. And the family, the neighbor were not that rich. They had to sell this tofu, silk and tofu, mm-hmm. and syrup. And the father went to the, like, uh, a bus station. Where they park all the buses when they come in and out, when they come from the south to the central. Sometimes they have to stop somewhere. It's like a stopover because they stop somewhere like where there are businesses. Ah, oh, right. Businesses or the market. Okay. So they can unload their goods. Okay. People mm-hmm. went there to buy things, to sell things. Mm-hmm. So his father was staying there helping uh travelers to bring down some goods if they let him, mm. if they let him. Sometimes there were um, many goods, you know, so he helped. If they let him, he, he helped, then they paid him something. Mm. Mm. Accordingly, there was no fixed price, of course. It whatever. And that was how they worked. That was how they make a living. But they were so kind, so generous like that. Mm. One banana gave me one piece of it. Wow. Mm. Taste it like heaven, <laughs> with all the love, you know? Yeah. yeah. I never did anything for them. I was just a neighbor's kid who happened to pass by to go to school together with their kid. Mm. Same in another city where I attended high school. Uh, everywhere. Mm. They're so kind, so good. Mm. I feel so touched, even now, talking about it. Mm. They all went to heaven. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wow. good, yeah. Wonderful. yeah, even though they didn't know anything, I didn't know anything either. <laughs> Kids, you know, <laughs> teenage, mm-hmm. teenage or even under teen, didn't know anything much. Just something strange in me, but I didn't know much, really. I wasn't allowed to know much until later. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even after enlightenment, I wasn't allowed to know much about myself until much much later, mm. uh, like in recent years, yeah. the higher I go spiritually, the more I discover, or I'm allowed to know some, but not all. Mm. Yeah. Okay, it's good. No, good enough. <laughs> <laughs> good enough for me to long to go home every day, but cannot <laughs> mm. voluntarily stay. Yeah. Not that I cannot, just voluntarily. Just like now, I volunteer to be like under house arrest. I can't go anywhere, yeah. can't do anything, mm. yes, much more than just this and Supreme Master TV. But I don't mind either. I don't mind as long as this can help the world. In a strange way, it does. Yeah. More than even if I go out and talk. Because I talk, I went out and gave lectures and seminars and all that. How many people listen anyway? So like this, many more people can listen. Before I went to lecture in only a location. Yes, Master. Now maybe some thousand people came to listen. Like this, uh, at least uh, many millions or billion people can hear if yeah. they want to. Mm. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. It's spread louder through television yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, wider. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And I do the retreat so that I can conserve my power. Mm. So my talk will be more powerful. Mm. It's not just the talk, it's the energy to go with it. Mm -hmm. Any questions concerning these uh, incredible stories or the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, hadith, records, or you just listen and you forgot to think even? Oh, I have a question, Master. Please. When the palace of the princess and her husband flew up, 
Where did they actually fly to? Does it say, Master? It just says throw into the sky. I wasn't there. I, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what happened to them. Yeah, I wonder myself. <laughs> I guess they just went to heaven. Yes, most likely, I think. Their time went up. Yeah. They just wanted to live dimly or in a hut or something. And then all this was the manifestation. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So if the things went up to heaven or not went up to heaven, it's just uh, our interpretation. Yeah. Probably there was a palace, everybody saw it, and the next day no more. Oh. Mm. So the husband and wife probably went to heaven. Oh. Yeah. Some people just uh, flew up and then uh, disappear. Yes, yes. Mm. It depends on how they choose to die. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Maybe the storm carry everything away. Yeah. Just like sometime before I live in a tent, sometimes the storm wanted to carry me away in a tent. Oh. I just didn't let it. Because oh. <laughs> <laughs> I tied it very well onto the trees and stuff. Yeah. And then I told the, the storm, I said, I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did, you know. <laughs> and some disciples at that time, because we camped together nearby, you know next to each other before, like in the persimmon uh, garden, for example, or in the uh, bamboo grove down there. And they heard me. I said, whom are you talking to, Master? I said, I talk to the wind. <laughs> <laughs> I said, he's very strong. Mm. Second my tent. <laughs> wow. And I said, I'm not afraid of the wind. <laughs> I'm not afraid of you. That's what I say to the wind. You know, the storm. Yes, Tommy Wind, yes, yes. you know, before I, I lived in Sihu and we didn't have any building or anything, just had tents. Mm -hmm. So the storms just sometimes show off their strength to us. But the tents did not fly away, none. Wow. <laughs> we tied them to the tree root or the tree trunk. Yes. Yeah. And somehow it's okay. <laughs> somehow the wind heard me. <laughs> I told him, get lost, man. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so powerful, you know, blowing around, you know, leaves and everything, mm. and tree trunks and tree uh, branches broken everywhere. Oh. I was so mad. I said, I'm not afraid of you. Get lost. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're living in tents, buddy. You're making trouble for what? Huh? Go pick on your own size. <laughs> <laughs>